Hey guys, how's it going? I want to correct Robert Raker again and look at some commentaries again because I'm just checking out his recent questions and answers part 8 video and I haven't looked at a lot of these but I'm thinking about going through them. And um, again, he kind of mentions a verse that I was kind of unsure of that I wanted to look into more. And um, anyways, when he starts off with the questions and answers, he starts off with... Uh, burial and cremation and he says it's pretty much up to um, the person whether they want to get buried or cremated he says you know I don't want to say that cremation is wrong but then he goes through the Bible and tries to say that Christians you know buried their dead and um, he says that cremation is what pagans do and uh, that's all a bunch of nonsense I don't think that God cares one way or the other you know the, the body's dead and another thing is, you know, it goes into what he believes is the resurrection, the physical resurrection of our bodies, which a lot of people believe. Even my subscribers, I'm sure, even though I've talked about it before, that the resurrection is only spiritual. It doesn't make any sense that, you know, he says, well, our bodies are disintegrated and all that, but God knows where all the atoms are and God can bring it all back together. That's not resurrection. That's, you know, uh, that's reconstructing. That's recreating basically um, so that's not what the Bible teaches it teaches a spiritual resurrection Paul says that we all have a spiritual body um, you know uh, as soon as we're dead we're we have our, our spiritual body stupid fly in here anyway um, so that's not even what this video is about but I'm just saying that's at the beginning of that he goes into that and uh, I personally don't think that the uh, Bible, the Bible doesn't say anything about burying or cremating, you know, whether one's right or wrong. And so, uh, <clears throat> anyways, I didn't agree with that. And then he goes on and, and he uh, <coughs> he rebuts some Catholic doctrines, which is fine. The stuff that he does there. And it seems like he's afraid to call out Roman Catholicism by, by the name. Uh, but, you know, he doesn't want to offend anybody or, or whatever he does, I don't know. But, you know, it's obvious that he's talking about Roman Catholic doctrines. But he goes on and talks about uh, the, Christ, the death of Christ on the cross. And I've talked about this before. When Jesus said, you know, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And there's different false teachings regarding this, where people say that, you know, God the Father actually forsook the Son, or something like that. No. This is just Jesus crying out in his humanity, okay, because of his suffering was so great. It's just like Jesus uh, got thirsty, and he got hungry, and he got sore and tired, okay. But yet he's God, and God can't get thirsty, and God can't get hungry, and God can't get sore and tired, okay. But he is... Uh, you know, he was God in the flesh. He was fully human, as well as being fully divine. And so, in his humanity, he experienced these things. And in his humanity, when he was crucified, he experienced great suffering. Okay, and it was as though uh, he felt as though God had forsaken him. Okay, but, you know, the Father. But obviously, that's not the case. Okay, so it's just... It was just in his suffering, he cried out, in his humanity. That's how he felt. That's, that's how his suffering was. But Robert Breaker, just like many others, teach that God actually did forsake him, or that God poured out his wrath on him, or whatever. Uh, the Father poured out his wrath on the Son. And um, that's not the case. But then he brings up this verse, Isaiah 53, 4, which says, Surely our griefs he himself bore, and our sorrows he carried, Yet we ourselves esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. And so, this is obviously a prophecy of Jesus, and, you know, it talks about how, uh, basically, you know, he was, he uh, faced persecution, and he, he suffered on the cross, and that, and we can apply it to that. But, I'm looking at this part where it was, you know, he was smitten of God, because Robert Breaker uses this verse as, uh, you know, a further proof text to prove that God the Father poured out his wrath on the Son. 
he says, see here, it directly states that he was directly smitten of God. He was, the, the son was smitten of the father. Was that really what is being said here? So I wanted to look at some different commentaries, and I instantly found some that uh, say otherwise. And I would tend to agree with these guys more than Robert Breaker. So, uh, Albert Barnes, um, let's see here. Because there are some of these that are like, yeah, I looked through some of them, let me see here. Smitten of God, here's Albert Barnes, which I like to use a lot, because look how much detail it goes in for each little section of this verse, surely. And then there's like two paragraphs for the word surely. And then he hath born, and then there's like three paragraphs, three or four on that one. And so he does not always write about everything. I don't always agree with him, but he gives, you know, a lot of insight. So I've come to appreciate his commentaries a lot. And, you know, on Study Light, he's one of the ones that are at the top here. And, uh, Anyways, Albert Barnes right here, smitten of God. Not that he was actually smitten of God. That directly goes against what Robert Breaker says. Robert Breaker says he was smitten of the Father. Right here, Albert Barnes, just a quick look through some commentaries, instantly not that he was actually smitten of God. And again, I don't just agree with people just because, you know, I've, I've agreed with most of what they said or whatever else, or because they're the church fathers or they're, you know, highly regarded, whatever, I don't care. But, uh, you know, it's as though people saw him as though he was smitten of God. And basically, uh, like the Jews saw him this way. And so I just want to go on to some other commentaries that I looked at. I think I'll look at John Calvin's, which obviously I don't agree with John Calvin a lot when it comes to you know, the election and all that, but he was very insightful in a lot of things. Uh, we thought him to be smitten, wounded of God, and afflicted. He says, in this second clause, he shows how great was the ingratitude and wickedness of the people who did not know why Christ was so severely afflicted, but imagined that God smote him on account of his own sins. Though they knew that he was perfectly innocent, and his innocent was attested even by his judge. Okay. Accordingly, Isaiah complains of the wicked judgment, not considering the Christ, the cause of Christ's heavy afflictions, and especially he deplores the dullness of his own nation, because they thought that God was a deadly enemy of Christ. Took no account of their own sins, which were to be in this manner. So they thought, you know, God was, or they thought Christ was being punished by God for being wicked. So they thought it was as if he was smitten of God. Also, I looked at uh, Matthew Poole. Matthew Poole. Uh, Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Yet our people, the Jews, were so far from giving him the glory and praise of such a prodigious uh, condensation or condensation uh, and c compassion that they made a most perverse construction of it. And so great was their prejudice against him that they believed that he was thus disgraced and punished and last put to death by the judgment of God for his blasphemy and other manifold wickedness. And so he says here that they made a most perverse construction of it. This is what Robert Breaker is doing when he uses this verse in this manner. So think about it and you know you can come to your own conclusions. But, and I don't know a lot of the details of the atonement that I can actually go through and explain, you know, things. But I can say that when he cried out, my, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? God didn't, the Father didn't forsake him. And um, it's not that he was being punished by the Father, but it was just in his humanity, okay? His, his weak humanity. He was suffering greatly, about to die, okay? And this is how horrible he felt that he thought this way, okay, that he cried this out. Um, you can imagine the, the torment and the agony that he was in. 
And that's what it's expressing. It's expressing his agony. It's not expressing the idea that God actually forsook him or that he was punished of God. Okay, It's expressing his agony. So, I love you guys. God bless.